Good afternoon, everybody. What is going on? I am Jeff Grant Media. In today's real user review, we have the new GORUCK 33 liter long range rucker. Now, I paid for this bag with my own money. I am not affiliated with GORUCK in any way, shape, or form. In fact, every GORUCK bag that I have bought, I have spent my own money on, whether that be buying it directly from GORUCK, buying it secondhand, or trading something, which the uh, only thing I've traded was a GORUCK sandbag for a GORUCK 15 liter bullet, but all of that came out of my own pocket. So I am not being paid or endorsed by GORUCK in any way, shape, or form to say anything positive or negative about this bag. All of the opinions in this video are mine and mine alone. GORUCK, if they wanna see it, will have to see it at the time of publication, just like everybody else. Now, why did I get myself a 33 liter long range rucker? Um, it's very, very simple. I wanted a GR2 and I thought the GR2s were uh, like crazy expensive. So when they dropped the long range ruckers in both the 33 and 39 liters, um, it was kind of a no brainer. Um, yeah, it's essentially the same exact bag with uh, a lot of the added features that people actually pay scars to add to their bags. So let's start there and we'll do a quick breakdown of the uh, long range rucker what this is available in and then compare it quickly to the GR2. As I previously stated, the long range rucker comes in both the 33 and the 39 liter version. And currently both versions come in coyote and black. They come in at $245 and $255 respectively. They are made in Vietnam and they both come with the GORUCK sternum strap pre-installed on your bag. And a quick look at the GR2, it comes in three sizes, 26 liter, 24 liter, and 40 liter. But the price ranges are 395 for the 26, 405 for the 34, and 415 for the 40. Now the GR2s are made in America and you have more color options and those options vary by size of the pack. But you have a $160 difference between the 34 liter GR2 and the 33 liter LR Rucker and between the 40 liter GR2 and the 39 liter LR Rucker. And yes, I did say 33 to 34 and 39 to 40. And the difference there is that the GR2s have the extra one liter for the laptop sleeve that is on the back of the bag where the long range Ruckers, they do not have that. So our main difference is the fact that both of the bags are one liter smaller the long range rucker is meant for rucking, so it does come with a plate carrier sleeve internally where the GR2 does not have that, but the GR2 does have the hydration port sleeve on the inside of the bag. So actually you're getting a little bit of padding in one extra pocket, not two. And the LRs come with three additional grab handles that the GR2s do not. So if you were to actually add these three handles to a GR2, you're actually saving about 250 additional dollars over the GR2 by getting a 33 liter or 40 liter long range rucker because each of these handles, again, are $30 a piece to have scars put them on your back. And of course, because it is part of the rucker line, we do have the drain holes in both the main body compartment and the front compartment of the bag, as well as the reflective strip that was added in the 3.0 version of the rucker. So there you have a quick breakdown of the main differences between the GR2 and the long range rucker. And if you wanna add in the three handles, plus actually the drain holes, which are $15 a piece, you're saving something like $320 if you were to get a GR2 and then add each of these features. So yes, you are losing a little bit of internal space because the plate carrier pocket is padded is inside, but you overall are getting a lot of extra value and we'll get into this, but you're not gonna actually lose as much space as you might be thinking. And one additional thing that I would like to point out is that this is not a 4.0 bag. GORUCK does not call this the 4.0 long range rucker pack. It is just the long range rucker. Yes, it does have the newly updated uh, plate carrier sleeve on the inside that the 4.0s have, but this has zippers on every pocket, no Velcro, and it does still have our front slant zipper pocket. So this has more akin to the uh, 3.0 than the 4.0. But why did I buy this bag? Why did I get, I said I wanted a GR2, but why did I want a GR2? Um, because I, I've fallen in love with GORUCK bags and I haven't had a GR2. And a while back I had a 40 liter pack that was gonna be my one bag travel that I honestly, 
I never used. I bought it in like December of 2019 and everything shut down the spring of 2020. So it's sad, it's sad, it's sad, it's sad. And I went through this whole clean out my anti hoarding phase, clean out the closet and I sold it because I never used it. And then I didn't have a one bag travel pack. And now we're starting to travel again. So I kind of, I got this to be a one bag travel and that's my intended purpose. But um, I've actually, I've been EDCing this bag for the past like two weeks or so now. And um, it's because it got a little warmer. So I have, uh, I've been riding my motor scooter to work and I found it very fitting that the first ride of the uh, the year on my Honda Ruckus was to use a Go Ruck Rucker bag. So. I rode my Ruckus while I was wearing my Rucker. So the very first time I used this pack, the long range Rucker, was on the first ride of my Honda Ruckus for the year. So I kind of found that a little bit fitting. Um, and why I reach for this pack, it's not just because they have a similar name, is because when I'm commuting on my scooter, oftentimes I'm gonna need more space to carry things. I can't just throw it on this passenger seat of my car. So um, it was actually a perfect opportunity. I wanted to use this bag and I, it was killing me that I got this, I don't have any trips planned, um, but it actually has been coming in very handy as an EDC on the scooter because I can fit everything I need to. I will throw my lunch in here, depending upon the size of the lunch container. Sometimes I'll throw it underneath the seat of the scooter. I don't like to do that because one time I did lose my lunchbox. Um, but if I have a more bulky lunch container, uh, I will throw it under the seat. But if I have a regular lunch container, I'll just throw it inside the pack, uh, carrying my laptop, carrying all the extra junk that I might have to carry to work. Um, it's great to have a little bit extra space and when I don't have the option to just throw it on the seat of my car, I wanted the bigger bag. So I've been EDCing this. Even when I took the car, I have everything in it loaded out. So yes, I have actually been EDCing a 33 liter pack. So let's get into the review section of our review. Now, normally we do our negatives, our neutrals, and our positives. This bag, we're gonna kind of do our negatives, our points of note, and then our positives. The reason I'm gonna do points of note instead of neutral points is because this bag is purpose built for putting in long miles rucking. So it's meant to carry a lot of weight, carry a lot of stuff over long distance. You're talking like the extended um, invitational go ruck courses, like the, the 50 miler stars courses, things like that where you need a lot of extra space to carry food, water, um, any type of tech that you might need to navigate through a city to, to do checkpoints in a course. So these are actually meant to carry like a bunch of weight, a long distance for a long period of time. And I am using this as an EDC and I intend to use this as a travel bag. So points of note are gonna be things that um, I think that are, a lot of people are going to be purchasing this over a GR2 because of that right up front $160 savings. Um, so. They're points of note because I, I don't think any of them are neutral points that they're going to sway in, in a positive or a negative way. They're just things that you should know about going into this bag if you intend to potentially EDC or travel with this pack. But we're gonna start with the negatives. And now there's really, there's just one. And the reason I put this as a negative is because this would interfere with the bag in any way you use this. And it's going to start with the actual plate carrier sleeve and the reason i point this out is because this is a lot of velcro this is a big velcro panel we will get into what's going on here a little bit later on but if you only partially open the front of the bag and you go to access this for either a plate or your laptop when you are going to close the flap back up it has a tendency to rub on the mesh pockets on the front of the bag. And because this Velcro is like industrial strength, it is very hard, it is very abrasive. Over time, it is definitely going to rub and wear out this mesh. Now, I do understand if you have a plate in the sleeve, you're going to be accessing and opening this a lot less than if you have a laptop in the sleeve, but nonetheless, you will be accessing this. And if you are doing events, sometimes they make you take your weight out. So you are going to be pulling, pulling this open, closing this potentially several times. And over time, I feel like that is definitely going to peel this up, eventually wear an actual hole 
in the mesh material here. Now there's a simple fix. You simply unzip the bag a little bit further and it will fall forward and you're not gonna have that big of a problem. But for me, accessing my laptop, I don't always unzip the bag all the way, so I do often get the drag on the mesh. And I'm afraid over time this is going to wear out. But my simple fix would be to, instead of having this mesh, have this be more of the solid pocket like you see on the top pockets of all the other GR bags or the top pocket in the front flap. Just have this be the solid pocket. Again, it will still have some wear and tear, but this is going to be more durable than the mesh. So I feel like the solid pocket would last a lot longer over time than the mesh would with this very sturdy, durable, industrial grade Velcro rubbing on this mesh. And honestly, that's it. I had the one negative point and I feel like that is gonna be a negative point no matter how you use the bag. Yes, I do understand that once there's weight in here, you're probably not going to be accessing the plate nearly as much, but if you are using the front pocket for a water bladder, you will in fact be opening this pack a lot more. And if you only partially unzip the bag to get that water bladder in and out, you're gonna have that drag on mesh and then over time you're going to wear it out. Now the reason that they use the industrial strength Velcro is because when you put a plate in here, you want a very strong bond. You want it to be nice and secure. So yes, this is very strong, very industrial strength for that exact reason. So it's going to keep the plate from falling out. But if you're going to be accessing your water bladder, you're going to be dragging it. So the simple fix would honestly be to just get rid of the mesh and make these the solid pockets so you're not gonna have that drag. So maybe over time, you're gonna get a hole in it. I definitely think you're gonna get some pilling probably sooner rather than later, but I think over a long period of time, you're gonna get a hole and that's it. That's the only negative I have again. And I feel like that's gonna find, that's gonna work no matter how you use the bag, that's going to be a negative. Now we're gonna go into the points of note and we're gonna start with the outside of the pack. And I said this a couple times already, but the first point of note is that if you uh, are ordering this to replace a GR2, you're already going to have your grab handles on the sides and the bottom of the back. And all of these are the grab handles that we've come to know and love from the uh, Rucker 3.0 and forward. They are nice, they are padded, they feel very good in the hand. I have used these to work out in and they feel amazing grabbing, slinging this bag, throwing it around. These feel really, really good in the hand. The next point to note is this bag, it's really, really stiff. Now it is 1000D with the 210D backing uh, and underside straps, but I find this to be really, really stiff even compared to the MCB 26 liter uh, GR1 that I had, which I thought that was um, more, it felt, it didn't feel as stiff as this Coyote LR does, but that was a little more abrasive. And I think that had to do with the dye that was in the bag, but I just feel like this 1000D Coyote LR, it's just, it's really stiff. So I think one of my issues was trying to get some of my larger lunch containers in here when I'm EDCing this on the scooter. Um, I couldn't really get everything in there and it does feel like the bag is already loosening up some. It's a brand new bag. I'm, well, it was a brand new bag. Now that I'm getting some use, it's kind of, it's been out in the, it's got drizzled on. It was a little drizzling a couple times, but it hasn't been like completely wetted out. So it is breaking in, but out of the box, for some reason, this felt really, really stiff, like way stiffer than any of the other GORUCK bags I've used. So keep that in mind. Um, it's definitely breaking in again, even after just two weeks of use, it's not by any means broken in it's gonna take a while to break this bag in, but it's definitely feeling a lot more loose or malleable, that's a better word, malleable than it did right out of the box. And I could definitely fit um, at least everything that I need in here with a lot more ease than I could for the first couple of days I've used it. So keep that in mind, out of the box, this is probably gonna be kind of stiff for you. And the rest of my points of note are all gonna be about the plate carrier pocket. Now. I do not have my laptop in here right now because I knew I was gonna be swinging this bag around, but a 15 inch MacBook Pro fits in here, no problem. But the sleeve, as we were saying, industrial strength Velcro. And as you can hear, I do have a bond, so it is gonna keep the lid down. But what I did was I just took some of these silencers that I just had laying around, um, that from they're just from patches, they're just patchbacks and I put them on here to kind of help to silence some of the uh, the Velcro. And then what I did was I just kind of utilized 
the uh, the additional uh, loop for just backing panel. I just put uh, put some additional patches here. So I added some flare. So I also have like you see I got my TPP patch here on the designated patch panel on the front of the plate carrier sleeve. But I went ahead and I used the inside to put a couple additional patches on. Um, that's for two reasons because well. It gave me something, some place to stick my patches, but it also was helping to kind of block some of this bond because I couldn't completely block this out. And I didn't really want to block the whole thing off. I wanted it to be kind of secure. That's why I left the gap here. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of only really catching it in the bottom half here. So I am getting a bit of a bond. And if I move this book, I'll get a better one. So I am getting a bit of a bond, but I don't have that loud ripping sound which is really helpful in the morning when your family is still asleep and you're getting ready to go to work or if you're going to use this to ruck getting ready to go outside and ruck you don't want to be ripping that loud ass velcro wide open while everybody's upstairs asleep so it's helping to silence the back now the other point of note is people think that because this has a plate carrier pocket in it that you can't load this out as well as you could a GR2. Now, one more thing in here. One thing you can do is, it is, there is a removable foam block and you could actually remove the foam from the foam block. So you can actually take the foam out if you really wanted to. I don't know why you'd need to do that, but you can. And if you take this out, this pocket will lay a lot flatter. So you can actually get a lot more space just by taking this foam block out. This foam block is about two inches. It's a rectangle, but the uh, it's about two inches in depth all the way around. So you're actually gonna kind of get almost that full two inches back. Now, yes, you do have your padding across the top. And this is for when you're doing not maybe not so much with the LRs, but if you're doing with the 4.0s, like any kind of bear crawls or any way, anything like burpees, something like that, where the bag's gonna be bouncing around where you have the potential for the bag to hit you in the back of the head, that's gonna protect your noggin from the, uh, the cast iron plate that's inside. That's why that's added there. So this is the same pocket that's on the, I think the same pocket's on the 25 liters because the 20 liter doesn't have the second pocket. One additional thing is that there is a uh, it's hard to do it even with it half blocked off, but there is uh, man, that is hard to do. Well, there is actually a loop panel inside the front pocket. This would be where you would put your additional weight or your water bladder sleeve, um, but you can if you're going to be accessing this, which may help for your uh, Velcro dragging on your mesh, is you can lock your plate in the back pocket and leave this pocket wide open so you can still access your water bladder sleeve. Because there is, oh, you can hear it, but it is not easy. There is a loop panel inside this pocket. And it is not, no matter how I try to do it, easy to really get it in there and secure. So this would be, once you get it in there with your plate, you're gonna kinda, you're gonna set it in there and forget it. And again, I have some silencers on here, so I'm not even working with the whole hook panel. I only have probably half the hook panel exposed right now, and it's still hard to get it inside here. So that's gonna be a, a hassle to, uh, to use quite frequently. But using this as an EUC, I have been using the block in here. So we'll stick that back in that second panel and we can slide that all the way down. Ugh. Now the panel itself is floating. There's probably two and a half, three inches or so between the bottom of the plate pocket and the bottom of the bag. Um, and uh, this block is made for carrying a plate so the plate fits in here more secure, not so your laptop, but it does add some nice extra protection for your laptop. Now. If I'm not carrying my laptop, I will bring my tablet, in which case I'll take the uh, notebook, the actual paper notebook and pens and stuff. And I'll usually just kind of throw them in the back because um, that one's almost actually full. So I've been accessing that one quite as much. And I will throw my, uh, my tablet in this front pocket so I have a little bit quicker, easier access to my tablet because this one isn't as deep. 
So where the back pocket, if I threw my tab in the back pocket, it would slide down a lot further. Um, maybe not even a lot further, a couple inches further, but I've been throwing it in this front pocket because it just gives me a little bit quicker access. It fits very good in here. It does still go all the way down, but I don't have to like stick my hand all the way in and pull it out. Now let's go ahead and move on into the positives of the bag. And we'll get the blaringly obvious ones out of the way first. It's a GORUCK bag. It's overbuilt. This thing is bulletproof. This thing is bomb proof. And if you manage to break it, short of like your dog chewing it up, something that's not covered under the SCARS warranty, it carries a lifetime SCARS warranty that follows the bag, not the buyer. I sell this bag, the person that buys it off of me will still have the SCARS lifetime guarantee. You break it, I break it, we send it back, they fix it for free or they replace it if they can't. And that SCARS lifetime guarantee, it's baked into the price, which is why these bags are a little bit on the expensive side. Now, getting that out of the way, the price of this bag, it is $245 for the 33 and $255 for the 39. That's $160 cheaper than a GR2, and you're already getting the handle mod. Now granted, most people probably aren't gonna throw the bottom handle on a GR2 for traveling, but a lot of people have the side handles put on. So that's an extra 60 bucks. So $160 right off the bat, plus another 60, you're saving about $210 right off the bat because you're buying one of these long range ruckers. That's a killer price. Now, in addition to that, this is kind of like my perfect marriage. What I want of a GR1 is the 1000D front sides, but I love the 210D back and underside of the stroller straps. I love this. I fell in love with this on my Rocket 3.0 and I'm loving this on my this long range. And you have your lumbar support as well. So not only do we have this nice 210D back, we also have this lumbar support, which makes traveling when you're carrying a little extra weight, even just traveling, not carrying like a 45 pound plate, makes that so much more comfortable. And for me, this sits and fits really, really good on my back. Another big positive is that it easily swallows my 15 inch MacBook Pro. This thing can fit in here absolutely no problem. And I'm pretty sure I can probably fit one of the new 15 and a half inches in here easily. There is one little trick that you need to know in order to get your laptop in and out of the plate carrier sleeve. And that's to simply fold the top of the bag back over the uh, frame sheet. And that will keep the top of the bag out of the way so you can easily get your laptop in and out. Now the one caveat here is if you try to tuck the flap for the plate carrier into the back of the sleeve, you can still fully access the computer and access the sleeve, but it does tend to push the top of the laptop forward. So your laptop is actually not going to sit flush against the back of the bag, but it'll be pushed a little bit forward. So it's really a trade off if you wanna keep it like this, or if you wanna just keep it tucked in and not deal with the Velcro at all. Um, it does fit in there, it's pretty easy to get in. There is no loop panel on the back of the full plate sleeve, so it does slide in and out very easily, but I feel like it makes the bag overall a little bit more bulky, and I don't like the way my laptop sits, so I personally just keep it like that. The other positive is something that I've already touched upon, and that is that this block is removable, so you can take this out, and you can go ahead and make this fit a lot, fold a lot flatter, so you can fit a lot more stuff in here. So if you're gonna use packing cubes, I would put my larger packing cube at the bottom, obviously, because I have that little bit of a bulge up here, but by taking this little cube out, I feel like I'm gaining almost all of the uh, space back in this bag. Now there is a little bit of padding on the, um, the front of the plate carrier pocket, and a little bit of bulk just because you have that loop panel in here. So there is a little bit more bulk here, um, but overall you're getting almost all of the usable space in the inside of your bag. So if you did have a GR2, you're gonna have more space internally um, because this isn't here, but when you take the block out, you get pretty much all of that space back with just a little bit lo space loss at the top of the bag. Now the fit and the feel and the comfort of this bag. I've worn this on the scooter, in the car with 
just like a denim jacket and a button down on. I've worn it with, with a shell layer over it or like a sweatshirt and a shell layer on the scooter because it's still kind of like in the mid to low 30s most of my mornings going to work. So I'm generally wearing something like this so I have a protective layer and then I'm wearing a windproof shell on top of it. And the pack has felt comfortable on my back in every one of those scenarios. And I will say that I think that this 33 liter LR actually felt more comfortable on my back than the 26 liter GR1. And I had an issue with the 26 liter GR1. I felt like it, it just felt a little wide on my back. And the 26 liter GR1 comes in at 20 inches wide, where the 33 liter long range rocker comes in at 20.5 inches wide. So this is actually a, uh, a half an inch wider. Um, but I feel like one of the main reasons is that it has this 210D backing and the lumbar support doesn't hurt either. But this 210D backing is just so much more comfortable on the back than that 1000D. So I think that might have something to do with it. It also could be the fact that I was wearing the 26 liter more in the uh, summer and fall, I think I had that on when I was wearing a lot less clothes. So potentially wearing the, uh, the jackets and the sweatshirts is making me a little bit more bulky. So that's gonna kind of take up some more of that surface area on my back. So maybe it just didn't feel as big because I just had more clothes on. So there are some factors, but overall, I felt like this did feel more comfortable on my back than the uh, 26 liter GR1 felt. But overall, final summation, what do I think of the 33 liter long range Rucker? I, uh, I love this bag. Um, it's no surprise, I love all the Gorex products that I've had so far. Um, I do have a few issues with a few things here and there, but overall, this bag is great. Um, this is a bargain at $245, and if you can get a GovX discount, what is it, 15% off, so you actually can save 15% uh, off if you're like a service member or a first responder or anything like that, so you actually can get this cheaper than the 245 or 255 but i found this to be an absolutely amazing bag it was completely comfortable in every situation i wore it in um, it is still relatively new um, so it does need a lot more breaking in but the pack itself it's just so comfortable to wear um, it's very convenient to use it's loosening up i did say it was a bit stiff in the beginning but it is definitely loosening up and i can fit um, more stuff in here and I could fit things in here a little easier because it's, it's definitely breaking in a bit. But I think if you were looking at a GR2 and you wanted a GR2, but you said the GR2s are too expensive, even secondhand, a lot of the GR2s are like $350, $400 for a secondhand GR2. Um, this is a great bargain. It's a great price. And honestly, if you're thinking about it, I would tell you to probably jump on it sooner rather than later because I have a sneaking suspicion um, next year, you're not gonna be able to get this pack. Uh, you're probably gonna be able to get a long range Rucker, but I think that'll be like the long range Rucker 2.0 or whatever they're gonna call it next year. But I feel like this overall design that is essentially a GR2, it has all of the same pockets as a GR2, the same layout, the two, same two compartments, the same pockets in this, those two compartments as a GR2 um, with the additional features that people add to their GR2s that they use for traveling. Um, but I have a sneaking suspicion the uh, long range rucker might go the way of the 4.0 rucker and you're gonna lose a lot of these features. There's gonna be, you might see some Velcro, you might see the loss of the front stash pocket. Um, but overall, I think this is a, it's a great bag, it's a great bargain. And if you're thinking about it, definitely grab one. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, at time of filming, they are in stock, both sizes, both colors. So you shouldn't have an issue getting one. I've even seen a couple of them going up for sale secondhand. People buy them, find out that it's not for them. So a lot of times people offer them up for sale rather than return them to Go Ruck. Um, so definitely, it's a great pack. I'm really, really, really happy I bought this bag. And again, I spent my own money on this. Every Go Ruck product I've had, I've spent my own money on. I'm very, very happy with it, digging this pack. So if you're thinking about it, go ahead and pull the trigger on it. So with that, if you like this video or any of my other videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that big red button, ring that bell right next to it so you get notifications that time I post a brand new video. Good night.